This has been a big day for Johnny Depp and therefore for his lawyers. But it's interesting to think about who got sued and who didn't get sued. Uh, Johnny Depp sued Amber Heard. Who did he not sue? Who might he have sued? Well, there was an obvious potential defendant here, and that was the Washington Post. The Washington Post is where the article appeared, the article which led to the uh, finding of libel today uh, uh, against uh, Amber. Well, why? Why would they not have sued the Washington It appeared in the Washington Post. And the answer is <clears throat> they were smart. But how were they smart? Why were they smart? Let's put aside this sort of uh, political, political, not a partisan way, but, you know, it's never a good idea to uh, bring lawsuits uh, against big newspapers. Uh, they used to say, you know, anybody, any entity that makes money by just using ink uh, is too big to be sued. Put that aside. No ink anymore. They made a, poly they made a serious tactical decision not to sue the Washington Post because they would have had to prove exactly what the jury found today that Johnny Depp had proved, which was <clears throat> statements were made about him. Uh, they were defamatory, held him up to ridicule and abuse. They were false, and that the person who said it knew or suspected, in this case, knew what she was saying was not true. That's what the law demands in a case brought by a public figure. We do that to protect the press and other speakers against too easily being found guilty for libel in situations in which there was really no way they could easily have determined what was true and what was false. And even more than that, because we think it's so important to protect free speech and free press that we don't allow liability to be imposed unless the speaker said something he or she knew or really suspected was false. The way the Supreme Court has put it, with a high degree of probable falsity. Well, what about the Washington Post? They didn't sue the Washington Post, all other reasons aside, because there's no reason to think the Washington Post had any idea of the falsity uh, of what was said in that op-ed piece. And if that's true, and it seems to be true, and there's no reason to doubt that it's true, if the Washington Post had been in the dock today, if the Washington Post lawyers had been up there <clears throat> defending the Post in this libel case, uh, they probably would have won. They, and the reason they probably would have won is that there's no reason to think there was any evidence known by the Post which would support the proposition they, they knew the story was false or even suspected that the story was false. Well, what about the future? Uh, suppose uh, uh, someone uh, who's a friend of uh, Johnny Depp says, uh, how about suing the Washington Post now? I mean, we have a jury verdict. Why don't we go in against the Post? And in a lot of places in the world, a lot of democratic countries, England for one, Canada for another, that would not be a tough libel suit to win. But here it would likely be an impossible libel suit to win. And that's because in this country, because of the First Amendment and because of the great case of the Supreme Court called New York Times against Sullivan, decided in 1964, <clears throat> the Supreme Court has said, in effect, we need to protect the press in situations where they say things in good faith 
about public people or public figures and what we're going to do to assure that there won't be liability in such cases where it's a mistake, just a mistake, not on purpose, not with doubts, but an error and nothing more or less than that is that in that sort of case, the Supreme Court has said, the press is protected. So that's where we are today. If somebody, somebody, a Johnny Depp comes forward to him and says, hey, there's another lawsuit out there. <clears throat> Why don't you bring that? Johnny Depp's lawyers would tell him, forget it. We got this great victory today. And what is our evidence in any event against the Post? What is it that we could say in a case against the Washington Post? Yes, that the article had false statements in it. That's one thing you have to be able to show in a libel case. But again, because Johnny Depp is a super public figure, he would have to prove even today, tomorrow, if he ever thought of suing the Washington Post with respect to the same article, he'd have to prove that they knew it was false or had you know, real doubts about whether it was true or false. And presumably, the Post would say, we trusted her, we believed her, or in any event, we didn't disbelieve her. And if they were in that situation, absent information that we don't have and we have no reason to think exists, they would win the case. And in fact, they would have won the case today. Suppose they had been sued and they had their lawyer in there <coughs> questioning <coughs> Suppose they had their lawyer questioning all the time. Again, the burden of proof is really high on purpose on public figures who bring lawsuits claiming libel. Johnny Depp, this jury has said, met that burden. Therefore, his case could not only proceed, but he's had this you know, really serious, major victory today. But against the post, absent something we have absolutely no reason to think is true, there was no good case against them. And a final thought, that's the law only here, only in the United States. We protect the press more than any other democratic country does. If this had been brought in another democratic country, Canada, England, France, Western European countries, their libel laws differ to some extent one from another. But none of them, none, have this particular aspect rooted in the First Amendment as interpreted by the Supreme Court of requiring that when a public figure brings an action like this, it's not just about truth. They have to prove what was said was false, yes, but not just that, but this added deliberately difficult to prove and very important other element of such a libel case, which is they knew it was false, or at least they suspected it was false. That's an important part of American jurisprudence, and it's an important part of the added protections that we have by living in a country that has a First Amendment uh, and a Supreme Court that has interpreted it, so far at least, uh, in a way which affords that sort of protection for the press. <laughs>